Isn't that incredible? Eight millimeters of brass cut by water pressure. That's crazy. And as you can see here, it fits perfectly fine. It's exactly the same as the uh, 3D printed model. I'm not even sure I'm going to have to use uh, a nut and bolt there. Uh, I think the uh, spring tension will be enough to hold the capacitor. If you haven't seen part one of building this awesome magnetic loop antenna, go check the uh, description below, I'll put a link. Uh, you pause this one and right click on it, open in a new tab, watch it and then come back here. Let's start with uh, a mistake I made. I shouldn't have soldered this first because if I want to solder this clamp here onto the tube it's going to suck up the heat and it might not get hot enough for the solder to melt and with the size of my torch which is fairly small I think I'm already going to have some trouble with this which is a heat sink so I really should have taken these two parts here and soldered them into the clamp first the tolerances are pretty uh, pretty tight, so I think I can clean this up with sandpaper and force this clamp into the tube. I can always worry about uh, soldering it, getting maybe a bigger torch later. It does fit pretty well, but what I'm missing is a mallet, so I need to find something to hit on this and force it onto the tube. I used a pair of pliers and it worked well enough, but now I have tool marks. Uh, of course I can paint it, but it would have been nice to have a nice shiny brass finish. <laughs> I guess not. Always have the right tools for the job. Maybe a little bit of duct tape will help. I should have thought about this first, but hey, I make those mistakes so you don't have to. I'm going to use a ruler for alignment. Less damage, but uh, not great. I don't even have a flathead screwdriver yet, can you believe that? I'm just buying tools one at a time. Well, it isn't bad. It's pretty tight. Well, it's clamped pretty well. Very tight. Uh, the machining, well, the water cutting was perfect. The design was perfect. Uh, good measurements. I think it's going to work. I still will uh, want to solder the uh, clamps later though, but this will be enough for testing. The uh, capacitance of your hand is enough to detune the antenna, so you don't want to be turning this by hand. So I got a plastic rod. This was sold to me as a 10 millimeter rod, but slightly bigger, so I have to uh, turn it down a bit. And this is how to do it. Second big mistake, big one. I forgot to thread in the toroid onto the tube. Now I have to unclamp this and do it again. Ah. All right, now we're good. I was actually able to uh, clamp the capacitor a little tighter, so not a total loss of time. The plastic rod is made of Delrin. That's the kind of plastic it is. And I'm just gonna tighten this. I'm using a very large button and that helps in tuning. I'll have to make a 3D printed clamp here so that it, it doesn't move too much, it's not too loose. Well, looks pretty good. And there's the button. The antenna will be fed at the top and I'm not using a large loop like some people do. I'm using the Storid FT140-43 and I'm gonna thread some wire through it, make a few turns. I'm using standard house wiring here, single conductor and I put 10 turns, but I suspect it's probably going to take about half of that. I'll just have to test. And of course, uh, the uh, trusty BNC connector. Well, this is after taking three turns off. Uh, with 10 turns, I have an SWR of 15 to one, the whole band, I mean the whole of HF. So I remove 10 turns and I place the uh, capacitor smack in the middle and this is what I get. So there is a visible dip there, a little bit above 12 megahertz, which tells me that the antenna is working. Now I have to take a few more turns and uh, get uh, that SWR down. Uh, it's about 3.5 to 1 there, and that's, that means the number of turns is too high. So I'm at 7 turns and I get a 2.1 SWR. Now it's very sharp. I can turn the button a bit and it just goes up really quickly, of course. But I can go down to, yeah, 2.1, 2.2. I'm going to take uh, one turn off, and that will be six turns. Oh, of course, I can't film at the same time. 
six turns gives me 1.8 to 1. I think we can do better. Five turns, I was even able to go down to 1.3 to 1. I'll take to take one off again. Well, I don't think I have to take off another turn. You can see here the dip is very sharp. The usable range is probably only 10 kilohertz. Which means that pretty much you have to retune your antenna every time you change frequency. This will prevent the toroid from uh, sliding off the duct tape. The K1 seems to like it. Tells me 1.0 to 1. <laughs> awesome. Dresden, Matt in Dresden. I don't know why my screen is flashing though, it's weird. Seems like I'm drifting for some reason. I'm gonna start the K1 again. Well, this antenna is really good and it's very easy to tune by ear. I don't need the antenna analyzer all the time, I just listen to the hiss and when I get the maximum hiss, I get the lower SWR. I'm very happy that it covers 20, 30 and 40 meters, although not as well on 20 and 40, especially 40, but it's optimized for 30 meters, 10 megahertz. What's pretty unlucky is that propagation is not very good today. The capacitor can lower the frequency to about 4.65 megahertz. So it could be used on 60 meters, but uh, with that number of turns on the toroid, it clearly doesn't work. And honestly, uh, the efficiency would be just a few percent, so not something you want to do. On the other end of the spectrum, I could go up to 21.5 megahertz, and that's just above the uh, 15 meter band, which is great, but again, I would have to adjust the number of turns on the toroid. And I'm more interested in 20, 30, and 40 meters. Maybe I could try to f set up a second toroid with a different number of turns and uh, plug in the one I want to use. I, I don't know, I have to test that. The SWR is okay on 20 meters, but it's not great. I could even use uh, 17 meters with a tuner, but efficiency would probably suffer. And it seems like it's going to be the same on 40 meters. I'll have to use a tuner and that's a bit of a disappointment, especially the 2.6 to 1 SWR.
I was really hoping uh, 40 meters would give better results and I remember my old loop it was slightly longer and it was perfect for 40 but this one being a bit shorter I guess uh, doesn't work as well. I think it could be made better by having better connections, um, something soldered instead of the BNC adapter and of course soldering the clamps. Otherwise it's awesome. I'm so glad I have HF at home now and this antenna is going to make a big difference. As I've mentioned before, most magnetic loops, um, those you can buy actually are too small. Of course they are made to be portable but if you have something that's this size and that's about 5 meters perimeter, uh, 17 feet, for me uh, that's the perfect size and it covers 20, 30 and 40. So once again, uh, you get very high efficiency there. These antennas are awesome because they radiate in all directions around the loop. So even for DX or NVIS or anything in between, they are absolutely great antennas. They are also not affected much by the ground, which means less ground losses. So when they are tuned properly and of a sufficient size, they work really well. The only inconvenient is that uh, they have a very sharp tuning range, very narrow bandwidth. So if you want to change frequency, you're going to have to retune your antenna. But that's a small price to pay for the small size and the efficiency. One important warning about magnetic loop antennas. Don't touch them while transmitting and don't stand too close either. So big success. <laughs> I could have done better. I uh, used a mallet. Uh, you know made a couple of mistakes I uh, really need to solder those clamps and I need to get a bigger torch for that but uh, otherwise all in all uh, I'm pretty happy about it have a good one